Hello, beloved of the Lord. Welcome back to our Bible study in the book of Ephesians. We are continuing in this tremendous book. We're chapter 5, verse 6 today. Again, we encourage you to uh, take note on these lessons. Uh, we have started from chapter 1, verse 1, and we're studying verse by verse, and at times a couple of verses. And also we've done this same thing, same studies, verse by verse, of the book of Romans. Actually it took us nine years to cover that entire book except three chapters. So we uh, encourage you to uh, follow these lessons as well as you're watching this uh, on any social sites, social media sites, we encourage you to share, click that share button so that other people can also be a partaker of this. So we're so glad and we are so grateful to the Lord for allowing us to continue these lessons. So in Jesus' precious name, without any further ado, we're going to go to our Bible, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. We're reading from NASB 1995. And in verse 6 it says, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. And again, Paul is referring to the verses before uh, in regards to immorality and impurity. Now, Amplified says, Let no one delude and deceive you with empty excuses and groundless arguments for these sins. For through these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of rebellion and this obedience. Now, again, now, the people that live and have and continue in a lifestyle of immorality or impurity, they do not want to hear God's command in regards their lifestyle. Why? Because the Word of God condemns them. You know, it's like a, it's like a two-edged sword. It either cuts to heal or it cuts to kill. And so people want to, no wonder, in the Western Hemisphere, Western countries these days, the Bible is not a popular thing. Because the sound, the voice, the, the, the teachings have gone forth. And those who dwell in darkness, they hate the light, the Bible says. And they will reject it. It's either that or they will argue, as Paul is saying here with empty words, human philosophies, trying to uh, take away the power of the word and give their own definition of what is right and what is wrong. And so they, with their fallacious arguments, they want to justify their deeds. I, I just saw a, a, a TikTok spot where this conservative lady was interviewing a homosexual uh, TV celebrity, and he was arguing that the the Bible is not talking about homosexuality as a sin, and so he had his argument that what is wrong with two people loving each other, and so that is the definition. They give their own definition because they want to continue in the lifestyle they have. Now, John Eady says, whatever apologies in the sense of giving an apologetic or defense for, their, for these vices were made for such sensual indulgences were vain words or sophistry, words without truth pernicious in their tendency and tending to mislead. Such vices have not wanted apologies in every age. In his commentary of Ephesians chapter 5. Now so Paul says, uh, let no one deceive you. Uh, that word 
We go back here. That word deceive in Greek is the word apatau. I'm trying to pronounce it the way a Greek person would. Apatau. Uh, from the root of apate, which means deceit, that which gives a false impression, whether by appearance, statement, or influence. It means to lead astray, mislead, cheat, delude, beguile, seduce into error. It means to call someone to have misleading or erroneous views concerning the truth. So what they do, they paint over the truth with their own color. <laughs> and that's uh, misleading, and leading people away from the truth. And we're seeing it in, almost in every facet of our society today, especially in the political arena these days. And so the truth is not popular anymore. They pronounce lies so much that people will believe the lies instead of the truth. Now, the, the verb, it's a present imperative with a negative commands that is saying stop an action already in progress, forbidding of a continuation of being deceived. Now, Kenneth West's translation reads, let no one keep on deceiving you. Stop letting them seduce you and lead you astray into error using big religious words that contain nothing of truth or reality. Now, this is the same old, same old. You know, nothing is new under the heaven. Uh, look at Genesis chapter 3, for instance. Genesis chapter 3 Verse 1, this is serpent, Satan, talking to, the, to, to Eve. Now the, the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, has God said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? So here, the old serpent is putting a doubt in the woman's heart, in regards to what God has said. So the whole problem here, the whole issue is what God has said. <laughs> and that's, been, that's been the tactic of the devil. Devil means a beguiler, a deceiver. From the beginning, is changing what God has said. Now, these days, they say, oh, no, we believe in the Bible, but... The Bible means it this way. This is what it means. God is God of love, and so, and so on. And so they go on explaining their darkness as light. So, now in the New Testament, we have three uses of this word, apatau, uh, here in Ephesians chapter 5. And then uh, verse 6, by vain, empty reasoning. In 1 Timothy, uh, let's go back to Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14, he says, And it was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Here, apatau, deceived, beguiled, misled. The woman was misled and fell into transgression. And then, again, in James chapter 1, verse 26, if anyone thinks himself to be religious and yet does not brittle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless. Here, James talking about the power of our words and the people that have no control over their tongues, and so that they are apatao, apat, apate, themselves. They deceive themselves. Now, so go back to the main text, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. Let no one deceive you with, now notice, empty, empty words. That's interesting. Words that 
have no basis of the truth of God. We say empty words, words void of meaning or void of truth. Words that have absolutely no power whatsoever. So we have words of power and we have words of zero power, no power, or void of truth. Uh, that includes human philosophies. I, I believe humanism, ever since the start of the, uh, you know, the West, it's all started in the Western world mainly in Germany, and then onward to England, and we had few philosophers from uh, uh, Holland, uh, Dutch philosophers, but mainly from these three countries and France, of course France, that have spoiled and poured a foundation of humanism in the in their Western thinking. And these philosophers, and I'm going to mention a few of them, are the ground of unbelief toward God in the West. Now, Isaiah says, uh, let's go back to the scripture, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light, and light for darkness, who substitute bitter sweet and sweet for bitter. Now again, they change definition of the truth. And so you have to be careful uh, what you listen to these days, on the news, on, on television, from our politicians, even from our preachers. You know, there are churches today that accept homosexual marriages and abortion. Uh, isn't that so sad? It's, it is heartbreaking that at a political convention, they place a mobile clinic for abortion. And not only that, but they brag about it. They pronounce it that this is our platform. Killing babies no longer is killing babies. See, that's the definition has changed. That, that darkness is now translated, it's now defined as light. They say it's a choice woman has over her own body. So a woman is no longer a carrier of life in her womb. But it's, it's defined as it is my body and I can do whatever I want with it. Killing that thing inside of me, it is no longer called a baby. So I, I give a new definition to justify the murder that I have committed. And it has brought to such an extent that those who stand for the truth cannot even say that killing a baby is a murder. I mean, that killing a baby is a murder, that definition is so rejected by the society today, by the mindset today, that you are put on the opposite side of the reality. You are, you are now evil. You who proclaim the truth, you are evil because that, what they define is being accepted by the majority. So you are the one at fault. It will come to a point where if you mention the word homosexual in your pulpit or abortion, they will arrest you because you are the evil one for proclaiming the truth. That's what they did to Jeremiah, the prophet of God. Because people's darkness have grown so much that any ray of light would be evil in their sight. And that is what America is coming to 
breaks my heart that a country that was founded by the truth and principles of the scripture now is fighting the very thing that blessed it. They are changing the truth for a lie. So I think, you know, again, going back to what the root of all of this is, the root of it is the philosophies that came forth from so many of these Western philosophers. Uh, Frederick Nietzsche, for instance, in the 18th century. He was a German philosopher, was uh, famous for his declaration that God is dead. And so he rejected Christianity as a life as a life-denying slave morality that suppresses human potential. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Uh, before Martin Luther came, Europe was in absolute darkness. We, we call it dark ages in Europe. They would cut people in pieces in public square, display before all people. I mean... Europe was in absolute barbaric uh, morality, just decline, and the Catholic Church was in disarray, and it, it was chaos. Till one man, Martin Luther, came and proclaimed the gospel, and light came. And when light came, did you know that 100 years after Luther, that they have the uh, Industrial Revolution in Europe, as a result of all the stuff that we see today, was because of the preaching of the light. You go back to the nations, Islamic nations, where there is no gospel being preached, there is not one invention in an Islamic nation today that can bless the world. Why? Because the light has not been preached. The light has been hindered. And this is what's happening in the West now. We're going backwards. Uh, you have Voltaire, lived in the 16th century, French en en Enlightenment writer and philosopher. Voltaire was a vocal critic of organized religion. Uh, what an awful death he had. You got to read some of these people's stories, how they lived their lives in despair and hopelessness and depression because of their ideas about Christ. Sartre, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, another French philosopher in the 19th century, uh, he brought the idea of existentialist, philosophy that rejected Christianity and uh, along with any form of theism, he favored atheism. He argued that life has no inherent meaning or purpose and that individuals must create their own meaning through free choice and action. Well, you see what's happening in America with free choice. Marx, uh, Karl Marx, a German philosopher and economist, rejected Christianity as part of his uh, broader crit critique of religion. He famously described religion as the opium of the people. It's a drug, he said. Religion is a drug. So these uh, philosophers and many others, they, they challenge the Bible. And they, isn't it interesting that all of these people didn't deal with Quran or any other religious book. They aimed their animosity was against the Bible. What is it about the Bible that everybody, all these, all these people hate? There, there must be light. Why aren't they criticizing the Quran? Quran has got so many mistakes in it. <laughs> Any little kid can read that and understand it. Yet nobody talks about it because they fear Muslims and Muslims' wrath. But they challenge the foundation of Christ Christianity, questioning its doctrines, ethical teachings, and social impact not understanding that these are the truths that 
have poured a solid foundation in throughout so many generations. So here he says, go back to the text, he says, deceive you with empty words for because of these things, the wrath of God, that word wrath, uh, or, orge, word orge, or orgie, means, uh, it comes from orgao, means to team, to swell. God's holy hatred of sin, representing his essential divine antagonism against everything that is evil. Orge is derived from the idea of a swelling which eventually burst and applies more to anger than proceeds from one's settled nature. Look at Romans chapter 1. Again, we've taught all of this in the lessons in Romans. Verse 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven, notice his present tense, against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So, continually revealed, present tense, continually in the passive voice, in effect, God's wrath is in process of continually being revealed of all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress, it's an active voice, which means they are making a, a volitional choice, a choice of their will to reject the will of God, the truth of God, which is most clearly stated in the word of God, the, the word of truth. Now, again, there, you know, people have different ideas about the wrath of God. Now, we know that the wrath of God it will be revealed. The fullness of wrath of God will be revealed on the day of judgment against all unrighteousness. But it's like, a, it's like a, a, a dark cloud that covers the earth or a portion of the earth and drops a few drops of rain, but its potential is kept until it crosses over the mountain. Then it just pours down. And the wrath of God is in a, in a similar situation that we see, in a sense, we see the wrath of God is allowing these people to dwell in darkness. And that's, that's the scary part. When somebody insists going against the word of God with the knowledge that they've been given, yet they insist doing that. God says, okay, you want to do that? Go ahead. Now that, that is wrath. God is not showing compassion here. God is saying, okay, you want to kill over a million babies in America? I'll let you do that. Go ahead and do it. And you will see the result of what you're doing. You will reap what you are sowing. That is what we are seeing today. So that wrath is not like God sending his angel and wiping out an entire population. He's not doing that because we're in the time of grace. God is allowing, but God does not want any man to perish. God is allowing men to have time and time again to repent and come to the truth. But meanwhile, God is saying, okay, you're rejecting me. You're mocking me. I let you do that. I allow you to dwell in that darkness. It's like a prison. Somebody who is in a prison in a dark cell and they reject the freedom. They reject the idea of freedom. And so you, you say, okay, I keep those doors locked and you will be inside of that darkness and you will feed off darkness and your mind will be corrupt and hatred will eat you up. You can see in the people that these days are going against the truth that hatred is swelling up in their hearts. 
more and more that they're going so much against the truth that they will not define, they will not recognize what is light and what is darkness. That's an awful condition to be in where you do not understand that you are at wrong and you keep doing it. That's an awful state of being that you don't recognize the truth because you rejected it, you rejected it so much. Now, there's gonna come a day, First Thessalonians, Paul says that. In verse 10, he says, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. Now, that wrath is the wrath that Bible says men's heart will fail. Men will have heart attack of seeing the wrath of God. The fear of God's anger. People get scared when a tornado comes and wipe out an entire area. Think about what God can do when he's angry. Wow. And so, like I said, a dark cloud pours out a few drops, but does not discharge all its terrible contents. Contents. So, sons of disobedience. Upon sons of disobedience. Well, my time is up. We'll come back next time and continue in this amazing book. In Jesus' precious name, amen.